now from the 3 News Weather Center. This is a hurricane season special. Celia, hindsight is 2020. Important information to keep you connected with the 3 News Weather Team. Sponsored by Sitco. Hi, everybody. Can you believe it? It's been 50 years, half a century since Hurricane Celia hit here on August 3rd, 1970. I'm Bill Vesey. Welcome to the KIII TV Hurricane Special, Celia, Hindsight is 2020. I'm Alan Holt, and this year we want to reflect on what that Monday was like as Celia ripped through Corpus Christi as a major Category 3 hurricane. You're going to hear from people describe what that experience was like as they rode out the storm. I'm Ryan Shoptal. The 50 years between Celia and now has taught us many valuable lessons in preparedness. Given the advancements in technology, this allows us to keep you prepared and safe if and when another storm comes. We'll go over this year's outlook, why it's forecast to be an active season, and some grains of salt to take with you as you too get ready for this year's hurricane season. 2020 has been especially tough with the COVID-19 pandemic. We'll also touch on how city leaders are balancing an ongoing disaster with the ever looming threat of a hurricane. We're going to start though 50 years ago with Hurricane Celia. The third named storm of the 1970 hurricane season, a category three major hurricane that pummeled through the coastal bend as she made landfall near Port Aransas on August the 3rd, 1970. No hurricanes today. We spoke with locals, many of you may recognize, who were here when Celia hit. No one expected Celia, you know, to hit that hard. If you were there, you'll remember it. And if you weren't, by now you've probably heard so many stories that it feels like you were. Hurricane Celia changed how several people remember and look at things now, even birthdays. And I woke up early in the morning, it was still dark outside. And I walk into the den and I see my dad's secretary and her teenage son in our house in the den, I'm like, why are they here? But I go, today's my birthday. And the teenage son goes, I'm afraid not. We're not going to have your birthday. And I said, well, why not? He goes, Celia's coming. Celia canceled birthday parties. But what about summer band practice? I will never forget. I was in the high school band at Ray High School. So that was our first day of summer band. That, that morning at 8 o'clock, we're all standing there at attention, and the band director said, I don't know what our plans are because I don't know if the hurricane is going to hit us directly or exactly what, what's going to happen after the hurricane. That was the moment I learned about Celia. With little warning or much time for preparation, many folks hunkered down with their families awaiting the unimaginable powerful force of nature as it continued to move closer and closer to their homes. Probably about 12 kids in one house when we were going through Hurricane Celia. I'll never forget them not being prepared. They just had masking tape on the outside of the windows and Celia was blowing hard and I'll never forget my uncle and my dad picking up the couches and turning them upside down to where they stood up long ways and putting them against the windows and it's because some windows blew out. Boarding up the windows and I remember we had a big picture window in the front of our house um, and I remember he left a little opening so that we could watch uh, what was going to be happening, right? And, and that was kind of our, our, uh, our window to, to, to watch what was going on when, when the hurricane hit. A six-year-old kid, you don't know what a hurricane is really. Um, I, I don't know that my parents prepared me for that, but as the day progressed, it was a very, very violent storm. You know, back then, you put masking tape on the windows as though that somehow magically protected the house 
from, from uh, uh, damage, and uh, none of our windows broke, so it must have worked. Late on that Monday, August the 3rd, Celia made landfall. Winds sustained at near 130 miles per hour, gusting well over that. The storm casting a dark shadow over the sparkling city by the sea, rain ripping across neighborhoods and down city roads. The rain was directly horizontal. It was just <laughs> down the street. Look out the window, right? This little peephole that we had and watching the debris, watching the wind, watching, you know, different things, you know, kind of blowing through the, the street and the rain, the intensity of the rain, the intensity of the wind, you could, you just, it was just, this powerful. And then came the eye, kind of like pressing pause. When the eye hit us, um, I know it sounds strange, but I can remember sun, uh, the, the sun shining down on us. And then when the eye passed over us, it was dead calm. We walked outside, you looked up, and we saw nothing but blue sky looking up through the center of the hurricane. The storm responsible for the deaths of 15 people in South Texas, nearly 500 others hurt, Celia leaving more than $930 million of destruction in her wake. No one could have predicted um, that there would be as much uh, structural, physical damage uh, of rebuilding that would have to unfold in the future. The storm was frightening, but when it all finally passed, fear lingered. I remember how hot it was. It was hot. I mean, it was hot, it was humid, there was no electricity. Um, your, board, your windows are boarded up, so you don't have any kind of air coming through the house. After the storm was scary, um, martial law was imposed. I remember the National Guard came. And the scary part, when your dad didn't come home before curfew, which was nightfall, it's really, really scary when you think your dad can get, you know, arrested by the National Guard. A spot designated as somewhat of a ground zero or rallying point, at least from the recollection of the people we spoke with, the once beloved department store Woolco was completely leveled. As a little kid, to understand the destruction is to see just rubble from, you know, what was a huge department store, just flattened uh, to nothing. There used to be a department store called Woolco uh, in Parkdale Plaza. I mean, it was literally reduced all to debris. And it was so unsafe, but there was a mountain of all of the wreckage and of you know their products and there were also a lot of police going around there. Life quickly began to take on a whole new routine. Some basic necessities, water, ice, access to those changed dramatically. Strange things that you remember is my mom preparing and then part of her preparation was to clean the bathtub and fill it up with water for our personal consumption if we if we needed it. I don't remember if we drank it or what, but <laughs> you know, can you imagine you know, your mother having the thought process of, you know, we could lose our water supply. So you know what? Hey, let's fill up the water. <laughs> let's fill up the tub with water. And I don't remember if it was there that the Red Cross had set up ice stations. Like they were giving out ice. I'm guessing that it was like a one bag per family, but I can remember mom putting on, getting a, gla a bag of ice and then putting on sunglasses and a scarf to go back through the line again to get a second bag of ice. And, you know, and, and, and looking back now, I'm thinking she was just doing whatever needed to be done. So many survivors here today, able to reflect, but also able to look ahead because as long as you're in the coastal bend, there will be more storms like Celia or even worse to weather. Had that David Abarca been here today, he wouldn't have been at school because they wouldn't have put kids in harm's way three hours before 
a major hurricane event. Hurricanes do not um, take into account ignorance. They just come through whether you're ready or not. Celia, hindsight is 2020. Our hurricane special will continue right after this message from Sitco.